Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investing. Thank you guys and girls for tuning in for another great episode. And as today, you're going to love it just like all the other rest of the episodes. But I want to start off with this. According to a USA, USA Today article, it states that even machines are discriminating, discriminating against Black and Latinos when it comes down to home mortgages. If you guys really follow me, you know I've been talking about real estate and looking to purchase a house, especially now with all the things that are going on. But I was very alarmed when I saw that discrimination was going on in the mortgage industry. So as you guys and girls know, I only focus on what I could control. So I wanted to bring up someone in the company. We have the CEO that's here with us today. He's talking about a solution to bringing transparency and opening up and ending discrimination within the home loan mortgage industry. Like I said, guys and girls, I didn't even know this was a, a big problem and issue, but I'm glad we have someone who solved this problem and is bringing something to the market to solve it. So first of all, let me go ahead and introduce my very, very special guest. He's coming in today all the way from Los Angeles, California. He is the CEO of Acroma. Acroma is this company that he brought out to uh, in the private sector to eliminate or solve the problem of discrimination when it comes down to uh, people of color getting home loans. So I wanted to talk to him about what made him do this. How does this work? What is going on? All the great stuff. So you guys and girls stay tuned. So without further ado, let me bring on my guest, Mr. Yaniv Canfi of Acroma, the CEO of Acroma. How you doing today, sir? I hope I didn't botch that. No, that was perfect. Thanks very much. Very <laughs> all good right. to see you. Thank you. Thank you. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So I've been a technology executive for 20 some odd years um, in a variety of different industries where I, you know, I always focus on bringing innovative solutions to the market. Um, a few years ago, I was running a healthcare technology company in Denver and just kind of as part of being part of the, um, the healthcare world, um, just starting re started reading more and more about what we call the social determinants of health, right? So all of the factors outside of health itself that really have a, an outsized role in what a person's health may, may become and what, what kind of medical care they would need. Um, so with, with that in mind, I, um, I, started, uh, I started to dig into it and see like, well, which part of this is, is really something that, that can be controlled and which part of this has to do with really bias in the system. And it turns out that there's a significant portion that has to do with bias. So I thought to myself that when I created my own firm, I would, I would use technology to eliminate bias within, uh, within some large pillar of society and I landed on mortgages. Hmm. Okay, so you pretty much found bias is going on in the system that you're in. And you said, well, where can I go to just, you know, hammer out people being biased against other people. Now, the first question I want to ask you, you made it clear that uh, people can't go shop for their home, own home mortgages. Why, why is that? Yeah, well, I mean, shopping for a mortgage is painful, right? I mean, no matter, like in the best of systems, it's, it's a difficult process. It's a very complex uh, product that, that you're getting into. Not everybody has a, a rich financial uh, background from an education standpoint. So there's a lot of industry jargon that we have to deal with. It's a weighty decision to get into, into a mortgage. Um, and there's also been just a historic lack of trust for really good reason in our financial, financial institutions. We don't need to look too far back to just look at you know the 2008, 2009 housing crisis and how that um, kind of panned out for borrowers at large, but specifically for minority borrowers. So Contending with all of that is very, very difficult. And um, so we set out to create a solution that would really make the shopping process itself um, a lot easier. Got it. So my question is, um, let's, take my, let's take myself for example. Okay, I'm, I'm shopping for a house. I got a real estate agent. Um, a real estate agent person hooked hook me up with a finance person to take care of my mortgage. And uh, they call me in. They say, hey, so what's your credit score? What's your this to that, you know? They pull out my finances or whatnot, and they say, boom, this is what you qualify as far as a loan. Mm -hmm. Where does the biasness happen in, in that uh, process? 
Sure. So there, there have been a number of studies out there that really try to analyze the stages where, where these biases uh, can really take place. So the part that you just described is really the initial part of the loan origination part. Um, that piece of the puzzle is actually the one, the one phase that is completely unmonitored by any regulators. You can shop around, you could speak to loan officers, you could speak to originators, and that isn't reported to the regulators until you submit a completed application. So in that process, it's very difficult to tell what kind of service you're getting, whether you're being slow burned because they're just not interested in your, in your loan. Maybe you're, maybe you're difficult to work with. Maybe you just have a challenging financial background that just takes too much time. Maybe the loan amount is just too small and not very interesting. So there are all sorts of reasons why you may, may be um, kind of disregarded as a, as a shopper. But let's say you go through and you actually get to, to um, to a loan officer and and you and, and they give you a quote. Um, at that point, your package is then sent out to uh, to an underwriter. And while you know there's a lot that's been done, and you know a lot of the regulations are good, and a lot of the kind of advances that we've made in the industry are good. What I'm focused on is is the true like elimination of the possibility of bias. So while like we've made some good progress, there's still a, a ways to go. So the so when it gets to an underwriter there is still a gray area. There's still an area where they can deeper scrutinize a particular loan package. They can mm -hmm. ask for more or less uh, information about a particular home or, or, um, or buyer's uh, um, uh, background. And it's really there where we can't really control it. Okay. Now I got to ask this question, right? We've, we've had so many uh, lawsuits and so many regulations that have passed laws and that said, Hey, you can't discriminate on a home loaner, home yeah. loan, you know, civil rights act. So many laws have passed to eliminate this, uh, discrimination. How does, how does we still have this problem? How does this problem even exist that you see? Right. So I would say that it's like, like every other element of systemic racism, discrimination in this industry has, just become more nuanced and more subtle, right? So these regulations are terrific uh, for analyzing very, very large amounts of data and finding patterns in a system. So finding patterns in a region or finding pa patterns nationally, maybe even finding patterns with a particular very large um, uh, um, uh, bank or lender. But what they're not good at is the very like individual nuanced interactions that 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 people have, and those patterns are, are difficult to difficult to kind of bubble up within within the system. So there is really nothing in place that would stop the like you know the the the, the lender that's doing 10, 15, 20, maybe even a couple hundred loans a year from having some form of of pattern of discrimination, or even if it's one off. So you know really the whole the whole point of our business is that is that we think that the only amount of discrimination within a system that should be tolerable is zero. Mm -hmm. And until we get to that point, all of these other regulations, they definitely help. But what really helps is to take it a step further and actually to, to bring the private sector in and make us um, kind of doubly accountable for, for, for what we do and not just rely on the public sector. Okay, so you're pretty much saying the regulations that we have is pretty much most they're looking at the large scale, they're not zoning in. So a lot of things are going up under the line, you know? So ask, ask me this question. So will it, will my home loan that I'm applying for, will they know that I'm black? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's a number of ways that uh, that that an originator and, uh, and an underwriter- Are they searching my Facebook page and being like, oh, no, not this guy. <laughs> So uh, how do they- For how, real, how do they, an underwriter is searching all of your, your social pages if they're doing their job. Um, so yeah, there, there are, you're, you're definitely being Googled, you're being looked up on, on Facebook, that's true. But there are, there are a lot of factors that really come into play. So if you think about what you need to provide in order to submit a loan application, you're providing your name. So depending on somebody's name, you can really tell their background, if they're Hispanic, if they're Black, if they're, you know, I'm Israeli, wow. you can tell what, what, um, what my background is. Um, you, can, you can certainly tell gender. Uh, not only that, but part of the regulations, and in order to really be able to report on this on the back end, 
we explicitly ask for a borrower to fill out their demographic information, so their gender wow. and their and their race and their ethnicity. And that's important when doing the reporting on the back end, but when it's not important is at the moment that decisions are being made on your file. So, so there's that information and also even the neighborhood that you're purchasing in. I mean, we can tell by a zip code what the predominant population uh, looks like. So there's a, there's a ton of information that's being uh, brought to the table that at the moment of decision is unnecessary. So you're saying with these discriminations that are happening, it's affecting the minorities because they're actually paying more for a particular home loan. Am I correct on that? Yeah, so there was a study done by Berkeley that really um, uh, correlated um, some disparate data sets um, and found that when we normed for financial, uh, you know, for the financials of the borrower, for the you know, credit of the borrower, normed for really everything that, that, that we can, still found a disparity in interest rates to the tune of uh, basically the status minority home borrowers are paying $500 million a year in higher interest rates than their white counterparts. Wow, $500 million more in home interest rates than their white counterparts. That's right. And I'm not saying that all of that is due to bias, although a large part of, uh, of it is, is due to bias. It's due to the inability to really shop around. Um, so, you know, there, there are a number of factors that really take, take shape. Okay, so why do you think... Why do you think minorities have a hard time or get higher interest rates than their counterparts? So how does how does that happen? So some of it is potentially bias. Um, some of it is uh, kind of intimidation within the system. Um, you know, I would say that like being able to bargain for a you know two three hundred thousand dollar loan is really the realm of the privileged class, right? I mean, those that have the confidence and the wherewithal to to really shop around and like get a quote from from one lender and then take that and use it as leverage with another lender. And that's not an action that we see as prevalent within minority communities. And frankly, it's not as prevalent within um, within uh, women of, of all uh, backgrounds. Um, so so the inability to shop around, I think, is a, is a really big, big part of it. Um, the other part is what can happen on, on you know, from either the loan originator or from an underwriter standpoint. But even if we just take the loan originator, um, you know, it's it's difficult to ensure that you're getting a really fair shake from any from any originator until you you know submit the application. So all of that, all the kind of pre-qualification pieces may, make it difficult to ensure that you're getting the best loan out there. Wow. Okay. Well, one of the things we're going to bring up. Uh, you know, you, we just spoke. We, we just spoke about the problem. We just spoke about how minorities can be. I didn't even think about that. The underwriters are looking you up on Google, looking if you're on face, looking you up on Facebook, seeing where you're buying the property, seeing that you know your inability to shop around, and they're offering you a higher interest rate loan. And I know anywhere there's money, there's corruption. I mean, sure. you can guarantee you find money there. It's, it's a corruption everywhere. But I'm glad that you bring this up. Now, what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on the solution. So we're going to take a quick break. And after this break, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the solution. That how, a, what is the chroma? How does it bring a solution to the mortgage lending discrimination? We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years. And we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, we are now back to the Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, Prince Dykes. I'm coming to you guys and girls today. If you was uh, catching before we took into the break, we was talking about discrimination inside the mortgage lending world. I didn't think about it. I didn't, you know, I didn't know that was a problem. So we talked about the problem where we talked about, you know, minorities are paying more than $500 million more in home mortgages, how they're being discriminated against by the demographic, where they come from, things like that or whatnot. So now we want to talk about, okay, now that we know this is happening, what is the solution? What can we do? That's exactly what we, we have today. So today, as our guest was talking about, we have Mr. Yanate, Yanate, Yaniva. I hope mm -hmm. I'm saying that right. <laughs> From Acroma, he's here with the, with us today. And now you spoke about discrimination and you spoke about how it runs rampant in uh, the home mortgage arena. I want to ask you now, what is Acroma and how is it a solution? Yeah, sure. So so we started Acroma a couple of years ago and really at its heart, it's a mission drivel, driven uh, mortgage marketplace. Um, we use technology to ensure that we are, are offering the most uh, shoppable um, uh, mortgage marketplace. We're offering uh, transparency. And really at its heart, we, are, we have this proprietary uh, anonymization system that, that, that we use. So really, if we think about the pillars of, of what causes discrimination and disparity within mortgages, I would break it down into... So there's an area of implicit and explicit uh, bias. Mm -hmm. There's the lack of shopability. Um, and then there's the misaligned incentives, which I don't know that we fully touched on, but you mm -hmm. mentioned um, briefly that you know, anywhere where there's money, there's a potential for, for corruption. So, so really, those are the three things that we look to attack. So to take it from the top, um, to, to really work on the potentials of, of bias, what we've done is we've created this anonymization whereby we accept uh, an entire loan package. We we then redact all the information within that that um that could potentially identify the borrower. And so this is everything from you know the area where we explicitly ask for you know race and ethnicity and gender to also names, uh, addresses, um, and we really try to pare it down to just what is critical for making a credit and financial decision. We then send that anonymized package out to our lenders. They review it and they make a decision of whether this is uh, accepted or not. And if they can accept a package like that, then we then marry in all of the original information and they proceed with underwriting as, as if it were a normal package. But it's really that initial moment where they kind of bind to a decision based strictly on financials. Wow. Um, the second part of it, uh, just to talk about misaligned incentives, so, you know, the problems with, uh, with brokers, with lenders in general, and with, with originators is that, um, you know, typically when you, when you sign up, let's just pick on brokers for a second, you sign up with a lender and you state that um, your, your commission is going to be a certain percentage with a particular lender for a given period of time. Um, so let's say you are signed up with five different lenders. With one lender, you're working at a two and a quarter percent um, uh, commission rate with another lender at one and a half and with another, you know, the other two lenders at 175. How you decide which loan product to offer the, um, the borrower is complicated. And to say that, it, that your, your financial incentives aren't taken into account when you're making those decisions, making those recommendations, I think is naive. So what we've done with Acroma is that we have signed um, on with every lender at a fixed uniform percentage of 1%. So first of all, 1% is on the extremely low end of all, um, of all commission rates for, for originators. But the fact that it's uniform is incredibly rare. It is part of our kind of commitment to this, um, to this cause and to this mission that, that, that we've done that. You know, and with that, I think you know, I might not have mentioned, but Acroma is a public benefit corporation, which what that means for us is that we are legally beholden to serve both our, you know, you know, to create shareholder value, but in addition to really um, uh, push our mission, which is to create greater, greater social equity. So we are kind of from our construct um, brought to this world as a, um, as you know, w as a mission first organization. So while, you know, green is the only color that most mortgage brokers see, we, you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we have other things that we take into account. Um, 
So the second part of that is that our loan officers are non-commissioned. We ensure that um, that there is no greater incentive to you know for 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 a loan officer to work on a particular particular loan over another, whether it's a higher uh, loan amount where they would get a higher commission. They just work on a, on a salary, so we we just take that off the table. Um, and then the last part around uh, shopability. So we think that transparency is absolutely key. On our website, you see real time pricing for every lender and every product that our lenders offer, really putting the borrower in, you know, I hate to use the cliche, but in the driver's seat of being able to make a decision. So they can they can browse through different loan types, right? So whether it be a conventional FHA or a VA loan, they can they can see, you know, um, transparently who that loan may be going to, whether it be Quicken or UWM or some of the other large players that, that we work with. And we, you know, obviously we we're showing the interest rate in the APR, which is required by regulation, but we also very clearly show what our origination fee is within the mix. And this is a level of transparency that you don't mm. find anywhere else. Um, you know, you're not seeing this on bank rating or lending tree. And we're also doing the origination. So we're not shipping out a borrower's information as a lead to five different brokers where they kind of scrape and scrounge to, to serve that, that particular borrower and, you know, uh, inundate them with, you know, 15 texts and emails and, yeah, mm. so we, we try to make it a very um, uh, kind of personalized and handheld service. Okay, so you already touched on it, but I want you to say that again because I want to take this clip and I want to show it to people. Is the misalignment of mortgage loan officers and brokers with what a client wants? How does that happen? Yeah, so so a a broker um, is incentivized typically by a commission where they're making some percentage on every loan that they close. The higher the loan amount, the higher their commission. The higher their commission rate with a particular lender, the higher their commission. Now, they so so if their goal is to make more money and your goal as a borrower is to save more money, mm -hmm. those are at direct conflict with one another. Um, not only that, but you know, some some loans and some you know some borrower situations are just more challenging, and the incentive to spend you know 15 hours working with a particular borrower who is on, is is applying for a smaller loan amount just isn't isn't there when you're a loan broker. You want to you want to go through uh, uh, borrowers as quickly as possible. You want to close the deal as quickly as possible, and you want to make your money and move on. And for us, because we are a public benefit corporation, because we don't have a commission base for any of our staff, um, all of that is gone. So we're really there just to, to serve the borrowers that, that we work with in a way that's really unique in this industry. Okay. So now anybody can go on to, how do I get this? How, I'm looking for a home mortgage. I'm looking for a loan. I'm actually in the market. How can I go test the water? Absolutely. So uh, what you do is you go to acroma.io. So that's our website. Um, from there, you can um, you can see our rates. You can uh, click get started at the top or kind of anywhere on the page, and it'll take you to a page that lists all of our rates. You can then um, you can select all of your criteria. So it takes into account in real time your you know the loan amount, the down payment, the uh, your credit score, etc. And then it shows you exactly what um what is being offered on our on our marketplace i will say that right now since we're uh you know we're a startup and we're, we're just really getting off the ground we are only licensed in colorado we are in the next few months expanding into uh into another dozen or so states so that'll mm -hmm. be uh that'll be news that we release uh shortly gotta get in hawaii man they want to see you <laughs> some big loans going out especially with those houses <laughs> but okay so Where's the fee? How do I pay? Is it free? Do I have to pay to use it? Is it, do I pay once I get a loan? How does that work? Yeah, so it's absolutely free. So you, you come on and you, um, you can shop around for a loan. You can decide which loan you think suits you best. You can fill out an application. We then, as I mentioned before, receive that application and do our, our redaction. But at that point, we also assign a non-commissioned loan coach to you that can really help with that, with the decision you made. So you know, back to the complexity of the product that we're looking at, sometimes you don't know which loan product is, is really best for you and there might be something else. So really our job is to enlighten you and show you every 
every uh, loan that, that is out there that may suit your needs. At that point, once you go through um, and, and su submit the entire application and, and our lender then uh, takes it on, our fee is really baked into um, the, the loan itself, which is the same as how every other broker or lender works. So we don't have any additional fee that, um, that you wouldn't have elsewhere. Got it. Okay. So pretty much a Chroma, I turn in my information and you pretty much strip down anything that I can be discriminated against where you're taking away the neighborhood, where you're taking away the, the race, the neighborhood, the gender, uh, you know, everything that can possibly be discriminated against. And then you're turning that in versus the traditional way of people can get your information. They can look up your name. They can look up your address. They can look up information and say, "Ooh, that's a little riskier." And that's what a Chrome is all about. Am I getting that? That's correct? exactly right. Yep, that's exactly right. Well summed up. Well, okay, got it. Because I want to make sure people get that clear and across to the point. Well, in the future, what are the goals for a Chrome? Just like you said, you started up. You started in Colorado. You're offering up people a way to get loans in an unbiased way. And it's, I think it's a good way because usually I kind of let my loan officer, a mortgage officer, handle that. You know, hey, you handle that. He comes back with a percentage. I'm like, okay, that's the best one out there. Cool. So now you're giving me a way that I can sign up, look up, look up my own loan, and then test what my loan officer is telling me. Is that correct? Yeah, that's exactly right. So test what your loan officer is telling you, but just really ensure that you're getting the best product out there and that the only thing that's being taken into account when you're applying for a loan is your is your financial and credit worthiness and really nothing else. And that's really the only thing that should be there. Does it work with VA loans, FHA loans, traditional Absolutely. loans, all loans? All conventional FHA, VA, et cetera. Yep. Oh, wow. That's nice. Now, is there anything you want to leave the people out there? How can they follow you? How can they get more information? Um, what do you want to leave the people with? Yeah, sure. So uh, you can find us online. So www.acroma.io. Uh, we're on all the social channels as a Chroma Mortgage. And um, please uh, come check us out, test out uh, our rates, and let's see if we can uh, help you find the right mortgage for you. That's nice. Well, thank you guys. And uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing that, bringing light to a problem or an issue that I didn't even know existed. You know, like I said, uh, I'm a person who goes out, I get a real estate agent, and a real estate agent turns me on to a loan officer. And they come back with the rate. And I say, well, did you shop it around? They say, yeah, we looked around. This is the best rate we can give you. And I just kind of go with it, right? right? But you were showing me how, I like how you aligned and said, hey, look, a loan officer, they could be getting a higher commission from one company or another company. Um, you could just, you know, when they turn your mortgage package in, there's so many things they can discriminate upon you against that could actually raise your rate, right? Yeah. And I thought that was pretty interesting. But the thing I do want to say is that you offer a solution. So a Chroma, I'm going to definitely check you out to see uh, what type of rates you got going over there at a Chroma, you know, being here in the Denver, Colorado area. But uh, we're going to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank, first, I want to thank you for coming on, right? Did you, did you have fun? Yeah, thanks very much. It was a pleasure to, uh, to talk to you. Okay, definitely. Thanks for coming on. And uh, also, I want to let everybody know, uh, check out a Chroma. It's free. It's a way to check out a loan. Check it against your rates, especially if you're in the housing market. Right now, some people may be going into the housing market. If you're going into the housing market like myself, stop over there, give it a try. See if you can get a better rate. Only if you're in the Colorado area as of now, yeah. <laughs> right? But uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys and girls for tuning in. Until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else you see me do crazy around the globe. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.